seated at this time I'd like to invite all the children to come forward for the children's message come on come join me don't leave me by myself everybody come up and have a seat a lot of friends today so sit close okay all right how are you guys doing oh that didn't sound very convincing try again how are you guys doing there we are so miss Ramona let me borrow something today who knows what this is yeah you can tell me just yell out it's a quilt it's a blanket yeah now is the whole thing the same no is it different yeah yeah, what do you see on here? Go ahead, tell me. What do you see? Colors. Yeah, lots of colors, yeah. Some flowers and things like that. So every square on here is different. That's the awesome thing about a quilt. You take all of these different beautiful things and make it into one big, beautiful, comfortable, warm blanket. That's exactly what I was going to say. You, you, you want to do my children's message for me today? It is exactly like us. Did God make us all the same? No, I was going to say that. That's, you were going to say that at the very beginning? Yeah, you were letting me. Yeah, I know. Thanks for holding on to it for me, bud. It would be interrupting your right. So God made us all different, didn't he? Now, did God make us all to speak the exact same language all over the world? No. No, but he did make one language that is exactly the same, and that language is his love for us. So no matter how different we all are, when we all come together, we all know that God loves us each very, very, very much. So can you look at your friend next to you? And I want you to say to that friend, God loves you. Now look to the friend on the other side and tell them that God loves them. Now, was that easy? Yes. So do you think you can do that outside of this place? I I heard a no from you up front. I think we can. So this week, I want you to try really hard to tell two people that God loves them. Okay? So no matter how different we are, God's love for us will always be the same. Will you fold your hands and pray with me? Congregation 2, please. Dear God, thank you so much for making me different. Help me to tell others about your love. Amen. Thank you, friends. You can all go back to your seats. Oh, wait, just kidding. I think, I think that the... Yeah, okay. They can do by themselves. They can do by themselves? 
we were told that you guys know a song that you can teach that are, is that right? Okay. Okay, come on, you guys can stand up. And you can come up here and you can put your back to the audience so that the others, you're going to be teaching them. So you can sing to them and they can respond, okay? So you can teach them. Come on up. Come here. So are you guys comfortable? Which one of you guys is comfortable leading them in singing? Is anybody? You. What's your name? A lily. A lily? Thank you very much. And you, you're going to tell, teach them a line and then they can repeat after you. How's that? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so you can repeat it. Come here, come here. I'm going to leave it let you do. Are you comfortable with the microphone? Here we go. You can face them. Love you, love you, Jesus. Love you, love you, Jesus. Love you, love you, Jesus. Love you, love you, Jesus, in my heart. Love you, love you, Jesus, in my heart. Thank you. Now, now, at this time, you can go back to your, your uh, seats. I know that the, the children from the Power of the Gospel are going to go to their Sunday school, but, and, are you, and they'll be ready to go. But why don't you stick around for one more minute to see one thing I would love you all to see. You can, you can have a seat right down here, you guys, and then you can go back to your seats. Yeah, just have a seat down here. And you can look at these guys. And then turn around and face them. And you can face, yes. Thank you. This is what is happening. And you may be going, what are we doing? Pentecost, that first Pentecost, if you would read the account out of Acts chapter 2, what happens is that the power of the Holy Spirit comes over the, the disciples and they start speaking in different languages. Acts chapter 2 lists 14 different languages that were heard from 12 different speakers. Think about that one. If you don't think God does amazing things, right there is one. 12 different people are speaking 14 different languages. We can't quite duplicate that. But we have, I think, 17 different languages that you're going to hear the account of Acts chapter 2 in. They're all going to be at once. It's, a, it's going to sound maybe like it did that first Pentecost as you hear all of these voices. And think of this one thing. While it may all seem chaotic to us, God hears every single voice and understands it all. All at once. And someday, I truly believe we will too, when God calls us home to eternity with him. Take a listen. Somebody. What may have sounded like chaos to us was all heard by God and understood. Amen, amen. 
Power of Gospel Youth, children, you may go to Sunday school. Get off. Yes, Sammy's downstairs waiting for you, I believe. With me for those are Itafa Boka. Yes. Uh, Itafa is uh, the worship leader for the Power of Gospel. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are celebrating Pentecost. The day in which the Holy Spirit came and transformed all of God's people. And that time the Holy Spirit came to live in each of us and we became children of the living God. In this world we often try to identify ourselves by what we do and the things we accomplish, our successes and our failures. But our identity has nothing to do with what we achieve in this world. Our identity is given to us by God himself who calls us children of his. And one of the things we know as God's holy, righteous children is that we are his masterpieces. All too often in our world, Satan is trying to lie to us and tell us that we are worthless, not masterpieces. At the beginning of Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writes out that we were considered worthless because of our sins. If you want to pull out your Bibles and follow along. The first three verses of Ephesians chapter 2. They read, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of this world, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature, and following its desires and thoughts. The rest were, like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. Isin kanan dura reda darba ke sani fi chubu ke sani karaha fura du tani tur tani yero sana tisin thora biya lafa kanadu ka bu tani de debia abo lensa ke sajuru rati isa goftuma abu abu fi abo abo mama tur tani afurici haman amana mota wa kayo fi abo mama ne gidu ti hoje chajira no sun tum ti Kenya hawa phone Kenya du ka bu ne akafedo namuma Kenya fi yada Kenya tuwarak akas tuwarak kasi Paul writes that we were objects of wrath because we have done the wrong things. And Satan wants us to believe that we are still worthless and we are objects of God's wrath. But God has come by the power of his Holy Spirit to make us alive.
Ephesians chapter 2 goes on and it reads But because of God's of, of God's great love for us God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dread, dead in our transgressions it is by grace you have been saved it is God's great love for us that makes us alive and that love was given to us through the blood of Jesus Christ in Christ's death our sins were washed away and God offered to us eternal life through the power of his Holy Spirit we are alive in Christ and we are his masterpieces chosen by him and loved by him I have with me a $50 bill does anybody want a $50 bill? Now, it's a, it's a nice new $50 bill. If I wrinkle it up like this, do you still want it? But why? It's not pretty anymore. We want it because it has value. The amazing thing is that the only value it has is our faith in it. It used to be that the United States dollar actually had gold and silver to back it up. That ended in 1963 before I was even born. The only reason it has any value is because we have faith in our government. And with some of the people we elect, I don't know why we always have faith in it. <laughs> I think I missed that. Okay. <laughs> that one won't be translated. For I, I, I missed the very important part that excited everybody. So <laughs> I'm into that anyway. <laughs> This has value, even though it's wrinkled and tattered, and even if I tear it, you'd still want it, wouldn't you? Our life may look like that dollar. The results of our sins, the results of life and the world, uh, the sin around us may have left us scarred and damaged. But there is still value in who we are. Because God's great love for us made us alive in Christ. Paul continues in Ephesians with verse 6, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We may think of ourselves as saying, yes, I'm saved. But we think, but we're not worthy. But with Christ, he says he raised us up and he seats us next to him, the King of Kings. And if we sit next to the King of Kings, we have value. 
We have the value of being God's children. And that is what we are. God did this so that in the coming ages, he might show to us the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. We are masterpieces. And Pentecost is the day to celebrate that we are masterpieces. Because on this day when God sent his Holy Spirit to us, he changed us. He changed us from sinful human beings who trusted in Savior. To masterpieces who have God's Holy Spirit living in us. And because God's Holy Spirit in us, we are now a temple in which God dwells. And with God living in us, how can we not have value? We are holy, we are righteous, and we are pure because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We should not be surprised that God gave us that spirit. In John chapter 14, Jesus told us that he would send a comforter. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells in you and he will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. John book, Johannes book, or not? Afur la kosa kura ja, makura sadei to do bise. Ariti dan do bisa book, or not? Afur la kosa kura ja. Ani abanan kara da inni bara bara isin bira hajratu. Kana bira kan isinif, kana bira kan isinif dubatu, isinif inket. Kana bira kan isinif dubatu, isinif inket na. Inis isinif dub, inis isinif dubatu kun afurat ugati biji lafa wan isin arginef isin begne. Notice that last line, I will not leave you as orphans. For you who have children, think about what that means. If I took your children on, a, on an event for our church, if I took 20 of them and came back with 19, that's 95%. In any class I've ever taken, that's an A. That's success, I should get a gold star. But I'll bet you that the parent that's missing that child would be very sad. And you wouldn't be happy if I just found another child on the street and replaced your child with that child. The reason is, is that they have value to you. That child of yours is priceless. And God has adopted you. That means he's your father. You are his child. And as your father, he sees you as priceless. You are a masterpiece because you have a father who adores you.
Ephesians goes on and says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. It is by grace you are saved, not of yourself. For me, that means a lot. This is the most important verse in my life. For most of you here, you've heard my story, but when I was 23 years old, I was arrested for drunk driving and put in a jail. And I thought that God could never possibly love me and I was going to die and go to hell. And a person introduced me to her pastor who showed me this verse. He kept telling me that I have been saved by grace through faith, not of my own works. And I would say, I know I have, I believe it, so what do I have to do? And every time I said, so what do I have to do? He said, you don't get it. Because it is by grace you have been saved. Not your own works. Because God loved us and just gave us free forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. And thus we have been saved by grace so that we cannot boast. It is a gift from God. Paul wants us to understand that. So in Galatians chapter 6, he writes in verse 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. There is one thing for us to boast in, and that is the Christ, the cross of Christ Jesus. Because because it is through his, his death and resurrection that we have the door open so that we can be called children of the living God. We are masterpieces. Paul writes in... 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Because we are in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are new creation. Think about what God did in creation. When God spoke the world into existence at the end of every day, what did he say? Everyone. 
It is good. That's what God's creation is good. And God's definition of good and my definition of good are greatly different. As an example, if I cook a meal and I say the food is good, it probably means it won't make you sick. But when God says something is good, his standard is far greater than ours. When God says it's good, he says there is nothing better. You cannot improve on God's good. So when God said it is good at the end of every day, he said this is the way it's supposed to be. And when he makes us into a new creation, he says it is good. And he's talking about you and he's talking about me. And there is nothing better than God's standard of good. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 finishes up with for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. If we are his handiworks, the work of his hands, and his work is perfect, then through the power of the Holy Spirit in you, you are perfect in his eyes. You are holy, you are righteous, you are pure, you are his masterpiece. And we have been prepared in advance to do good works. When God spoke the world into existence, he had Adam and Eve be stewards over it. But their work did not make them sweat. It was not hard. It was not difficult for them. It was only after the fall that labor became something that we toiled at. Before the fall, that was something that gave us fulfillment. It gave us a purpose in this world. And now as his recreated creation, we have good works to do. And if you've ever experienced helping out a neighbor in need, you know that even if it is, is a difficult task, that there is a joy that comes from serving them. There is still a feeling of fulfillment and purpose. Because it is God's work that he has prepared for us to do. As his masterpiece, he calls us to serve our neighbor and to love them. And this day we want to thank you for the service that you give to your churches, for the service that you give to your communities. It is not something that we boast in. It is something that we celebrate because it is a gift from God for us to be able to be fulfilled 
world by serving him. Because as his masterpieces and we as we serve our community, we have an opportunity to bring the hope of Christ Jesus to the world. You are God's masterpiece. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. That you can go and serve the world around you. That you may experience joy in a way that only you can experience by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank God that he sees value in us. Value that is based on his love. Not anything good in us. Because he is merciful. And his mercy makes us treasures. Amen. Amen. We continue to worship God through our tithes and offerings. And all the churches, both churches can, can put it in the offering and we'll separate it out for, for the churches as we go. Let's continue to worship God.
Okay, I'm just going to briefly translate as I was asked. Hallelujah is a universal. So, Lugafa uh, Furan means in truth and spirit, we worship you. We bow before you and we worship you. And then, Arjuman Wak, your, your grace and your greatness is forever. Um, then, uh, your goodness, there is no limit to your goodness. You are always a good God. So, that is what we've been singing. Amen. Amen. And standing for our prayer. We waited until you sat down, though. <laughs> Let us come before our Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the glory of this day. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us your Holy Spirit to empower us to trust. We thank you, Lord God, that we have an opportunity to come together as one body in Christ from all over the world to worship you. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, we, we get this opportunity to worship together with brothers and sisters who speak different languages and come from different places. And Lord, it is a foretaste of what heaven will be like as we gather around your throne and we glorify you and praise your name. Father, thank you that you give us a glimpse of your goodness. Thank you that you give us a glimpse of the picture of heaven. And Lord God, we look forward to the day when we can come before your throne in body and spirit and to praise you and to experience your new creation the way it was always meant to be. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord God, that you will cause each of us, as spirit-filled believers in you, to, to live our lives in such a way that we 
we will share faith and share our lives that others may know the truth and may come to the saving gospel of Jesus Christ and their lives may too be transformed and they may be called a child of the living God. Father in heaven, may this reality come to us that we can experience you face to face with people from all over this world. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before you preparing to receive your very body and blood. And we reflect in our lives and we silently confess to you our sins. as we love ourselves forgive us we don't love you with our whole heart mind strength and soul forgive us we don't see our neighbor as somebody who is priceless in your eyes and your son shed his blood for forgive us forgive us for our thoughts our words and our actions that offend you Father in heaven we give you thanks for the blood of Jesus Christ we thank you Lord God that you have offered us grace mercy and forgiveness we thank you that we are victorious because of his sacrifice and we thank you that because he rose we shall also rise Heavenly Father, thank you that we are forgiven children because of Christ's blood that washes us clean. Strengthen us to live in that today and always. Amen. the night that our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, again he gave thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take, drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant, shed for you in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. The table of the Lord is prepared. Come and receive his mercy, for you are his forgiven children. Amen. You may be seated. Believe, we believe that each and every one of us is a sinner that has been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that in this body and blood that we receive his mercy and his grace, his forgiveness. With a desire to amend our lives, we believe that we receive his very body and his very blood in, with, and under this bread and wine. If you share our confession, please come and join us.
Now may this, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace to serve the Lord. Receive the benediction of the Lord from Numbers. May the fa- <laughs> now I'm going to forget it. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. to go across to join us for lunch as we celebrate our volunteers all who have helped and just celebrate as a body in Christ. Please and come join us. Two things that I want to mention. One is we have talked about for a while this um, uh, bread oven. There we go. And and they went up to, a group of people went up to uh, White Bear Minnesota, White Bear Lake, Minnesota and made some bread. It's available out here. If you choose to get, to take some, you can. If you want to put a free will offering, we'll give it all to, to missions, uh, a local mission, if you'd like to give a free will offering for that. But this is the important thing here, okay? You are God's masterpiece. Yes. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been transformed, and by the Holy Spirit in you, you have been adopted. You are his masterpiece. Do not let Satan lie to you. Go and live in his word. The promise that you are forgiven children of God, loved by him and empowered by him. Go live in that joy and power so that a whole world may know the power of our God, for he is great. Amen and amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. As you're leaving the the church, we're going to sing the last song. Um, The general message says, "We we have a living hope through Christ. It's going to go a little faster, so I'm going to try. Jurata, 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 Jurata,